The trail to finding Johnny Favorite takes Harry Angel to Coney Island in search of the fortune teller, Madame Zora. We examine the clues the scene gives us in its few short minutes. With the help of the script, we look into the differences and decode the mystery of Coney Island. Angel Heart was released in 1987, written and directed by Alan Parker, and based on the novel Falling Angel by William Schwartzberg. After Harry Angel parks his car in front of the Penny Arcade, we are given a wide view of underneath the boardwalk. It is very desolate. There is garbage. There are rats feeding on scraps. It is not beautiful. Angel walks on the beach and meets Izzy. The script reads, Harry, silhouetted against the sea, walks towards a man sitting in a deck chair. Izzy, he is incongruously naked from the waist up, slim, sinewy, oblivious to the cold, a plastic nose shield clipped to his glasses. Izzy offers Angel one of his nose shields he found underneath the boardwalk, before suggesting to Angel that he should speak to his wife if he wants to learn more about Johnny Favorite and Madame Zora. All we know about his wife, Bo, as named in the script, is that she is Baptist and is little on the heavy side. She stands knee deep in the water and tells Angel Margaret Cruzmark was Madame Zora and closed her booth and returned down south. Bo then serenades a Johnny Favorite song. Let's first take a look at Izzy. When Harry asks him what he does in the summer, Izzy answers, he bites the head off of rats. When asked what he does in the winter, Izzy chuckles and answers the same. His identity is reflected in his choice of clothes. The top half represents the summer, the bottom half the winter. The moral of his character, what you see is what you get. There is only one Izzy. Compare him to Harry Angel who searches for Favorite and Cruzmark, each with their own aliases. Angel is asking about Madame Zora, who also is Margaret Cruzmark. He is also trying to find Johnny Favorite, also known as Johnny Liebling, and we all know where this will go. Izzy is genuine. Harry is not. This is accentuated with the nose shield. We see two versions of Harry in one scene, with and without it. It's not a coincidence that Izzy talks about the boardwalk and rats after we get a close and personal look at them both. There can be a few interpretations that explains why underneath the boardwalk is so important. It may show the true ugliness, the cost of demonstrating a facade of amusement and excitement above. Perhaps it's an analogy of Johnny Favorite's price of fame. There is also a little foreshadowing with Izzy's sacrificing animals in public at that to make a living. This is something we see later in the film with chickens. We move to Bo, that the film makes it important to note that she is Baptist, and it's not just a subtle reference to religion or a joke between a hocus-pocus occultist and a Protestant. We see a Baptist in water. It won't be the last time. Have you wondered why the distance between Angel and Bo? Normally someone would turn around at least, but Bo keeps her back and her distance from Angel. Pay attention how Angel keeps backing away from her. Symbolically, it's more than just trying to keep his feet dry. He's distancing himself from religion, or maybe it's distancing itself from him. Bo serenades Harry with a Johnny favorite tune as he walks away. The song mocks him. Harry Angel can't escape the memories of Johnny Favorite. Before we get into the details found in the script, but not in the film, like, share, or subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this one. The film's Coney Island scene was very faithful to the original draft of the script. Izzy and Bo follow the screenplay almost word by word. However, it does leave out a couple of scenes. After the shot underneath the boardwalk with its gnawing rats, it cuts away to an interior shot of a woman dead lying on bed sheets splattered with blood. A fat man stares at her from above with his pale gray eyes filled with fear and frozen in time. 
The next scene would have revealed Harry Angel had walked into a wax museum with many figures in violent poses, including the wax figure of Fatty Arbuckle over the figure of Virginia Rape. Links below for those unfamiliar with both. Harry asks the arcade man where he can find Madame Zora's pitch. The arcade man sends him to Izzy. The arcade man would be briefly mentioned in the film when Angel approaches Izzy on the beach. Let me know in the comments below what did you find interesting from the Coney Island scene? Would you have preferred to see the wax museum or was it creepy enough without it? This is Mr. G of Synergy saying, don't be a gazuni. Keep your best shoes out of the ocean. Check out other videos on my channel. Thanks for watching.